So the economy, the developing the economy, we, we already think we consume lots of things, produce lots of things, then you revitalize the economy, economy will go well, GDP will go up. This story is only true when there's not enough people, when the earth is infinity, we can continue to do that. But during the 20th century, things have changed. We have too many people consuming too much resources, and we are exceeding the boundary of the earth. So consumption, 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 pushing consumerism is not longer a good thing anymore. We really need to learn to use as little material, as little resources to make our life happy. And that's the awakening we need to do. So if I said the entire world is overdeveloped, we should not follow the first step of the overdeveloped country, then we might have to look at the alternative ways of development. It is quite interesting when I gave a talk and said the entire world is overdeveloped then many of the African scientists stood up in protest and said, Professor Lee, don't say we are overdeveloped. Africa is still in a very miserable stage. We need to develop. I said, granted, we need to develop. Many not yet overdeveloped countries need to develop. But the development, if you were to follow the American whole step, at the present time, Africa this carbon dioxide emission is not even up to 0 0.5 tons. If we say globally, we will set the limit in three tons. If we set the limit to three tons, I'm, I'm sure Malaysia is exceeding that amount. Taiwan is producing 12 tons. Japan, Germany, England producing about nine tons. US is 20 tons, just like Canada and Australia. So if you say three times, then US, Taiwan, all has to do our effort to reduce it. But Africa is 0 0.5, or India is about 0 0.5. If you say three times, it means you have six times more energy to consume on average. If you have six times more energy to consume, then I would ask the question, with the current science and technology, what kind of society we want to build. If you imitate American way of life, then three times is only one seventh of what US accomplished. People will be still miserable. So we really need to look at the alternative ways of development. Malaysia is fortunate. We have a big land mass population density is low. You do enjoy lots of sunshine and it's more likely you can live in harmony with nature. Easier to accomplish that compared to many other places. And then we have to go back to sunshine. This is the most important key point. As I said, for more than a million years, many are part of the nature. We depend on sunshine. Sun, in one hour, it will transmit enough energy to the surface of the earth for human society to consume for entire year. Or I would say sunshine provides about 10,000 times the energy to the surface of the earth compared to what human society needed. Of course, most of the sun will go to the ocean. But even though sunshine on the land would be enormous, if we are smart enough, we should be able to use sunshine and have a very fruitful, happy life. We deviated abundant sunshine. Now we have to go back to sunshine. It takes time. Developing various technology, it takes time. But that's the only way. If we talk about renewable energy, is a photovoltaic, voltaic, or wind power generation, ocean current, all came from sunshine. We have to go back to sunshine. Or agriculture, 
material we use could be provided by sunshine. And that's the extremely important mission we have to do. Even if you don't like it, petroleum will run out. But the worry is, if all petroleum run out, we might disappear before then. Well, as I said, during the 20th century, technology democratized. Technology become very consumer-oriented or individually-oriented consumption. And I still remember when I was young, we go to the movie theater. Movie theater would be bigger than this. I come with thousands of people. Everybody watch one movie and go back to the classroom. Lots of people discussing the movie. And even the movie like thousands, people discuss a lot about what's happening. But now people are watching different things, all different things individually. And people become dissociated from each other. So when we return to sunshine, one of the things we, we have to do is technology for community rather than for the individuals. That is more important. And again, we have to go back to respect our culture and our tradition. Our ancestors certainly did a lot to learn to live harmoniously with nature. So we have to pay attention to culture and tradition. And also, if you look at the current situation, the entire is divided by many countries. This is Africa, Europe, small countries, all over the places. And everybody's trying, trying to improve their life and competing each other. So whenever we said we have a global problem, we have to work together to solve it. They all agree that we should do something. And then when you go back to their own country, try to get fun to do some research, one question which was asked is, is that going to help national competitiveness? You said no, then there's no money. Is that going to improve the employment? Is that going to improve national competitiveness? Those are the main questions. But if you look at the entire world, those national boundaries are just lines on Earth. Nature do not know any national boundaries. Carbon dioxide emission will cover all of the world. So if you look at the bottom of the Earth, those are continent. You don't see the line of nation state, but well, that's the situation we are in. So we do have a scientific organization. We have International Council for Science. That's the biggest NGO or scientific organization on Earth. And as I said, regional office in Asia. I think it's headed by Professor Zakari sitting here. It's located in uh, in Kuala Lumpur. And what we are saying is because lots of things we are doing become a global problem. And unless we find global solution, there will be no solutions. So we have to gradually change international science into global science. The difference is international science means international, nation-based, and then try to come make the linkage. But the global science means we have to look at the globe as its entirety and see how can we find the solution. The two things are very different. Although we realize problem need to be solved by nation state, but nation state has to go step forward in another organization is the Global Science Organization to solve all those problems. So, at the present time, I do believe 
the organization of global science, or science organization is extremely important. So if somebody, one organization, look at the Earth's surface the entirety, they will look at the desert area and say, well, those are the area you could produce solar thermals or solar voltaic power generation. And near the pole region, wind will be steady. That the place we have to have a wind power generation. And some of the ocean current is high in certain region. You can depend on the ocean current to get something out. Of course, if I said that, then we have to be connected. Connected. You can use high voltage DC transmission line, not to AC. Then you can transmit electricity many thousands of kilometers without worrying about the loss. And then you will be able to see that the entire world could depend on each other. But that is only possible if you send the electricity from Sahara region to Europe. You don't worry about some country will cut the wire off. Uh, that, if that happened, then it, it will not provide stable energy systems. But anyway, unless we learn to work together as a global village, unless we learn to work together and look at the entire Earth as a unit and see how can we control the carbon dioxide and other global warming gases, I hope I'm relatively small. I mentioned about ICSU because, uh, as I said, ICSU is a big organization. We have 121 national members representing 141 countries. We do have 30 international scientific unions. But in this September, there will be another one called International Sociology Association will be joining in. That will be the first social science union joining into the ICSU. And we do have 22 international scientific associates. And the important thing is we do have 17 interdisciplinary bodies in key areas. I think you do see the three regional office, regional office of the Asia and the Pacific is right here in the Kuala Lumpur. And we do have two other regional office, regional office of Africa, which in Pretoria, now they're moving to Mexico City. And another regional office for Latin America is in Rio, no, the Rio de Janeiro is the one in the Rio de Janeiro will be moved to Mexican City, the regional office of Africa, where still will be in Pretoria in South Africa. In the International Council of Science, we are now pushing for something very important. And I just came back from Paris a couple of days ago for attending so called the transition team meeting. In the past, we have many unions, many organizations, many projects try to learn earth systems. But those earth system research are fragmented and we are not in the good position to say, if we do what, temperature go up to two degree at what time? Now we said it might go up to two degrees centigrade by 2050, there will be plus minus one. Could be one degree, could be three degree. If you have uncertainty like plus minus one, one degree or three degree, politicians will not take seriously. 